I'm not gonna tell anyone, and you know I was. I don't know that. You know me so much. Well, I can trust you about as far as I can throw you. Wiretaps take center stage at the Kyler Use trial as the jury hears the moment Use refers to himself as a killer. He is on trial for the deaths of Kara Kopetsky and Jessica Runyons. Kopetsky went missing in 2007, Runyons in 2016. Their remains were found in a wooded area in 2017. There were some big moments in the trial today, and we have team coverage tonight. We begin with 41 Action supporter Sarah Plake outside the Cass County Courthouse. Sarah, bring us up to date. Well, again, today, all focused on Kara Kopetsky's disappearance and that case. We heard shocking testimony from people who were close to used, who allege that he confessed to killing her. And they describe his violent behavior. We left the day off uh, with hearing some wiretap video and audio from the FBI that a former girlfriend wore. Um, and, and it was right up to the point where they were about to show us the audio and, and the video of them starting a uh, seance on a Ouija board to try to connect with Kopetsky spirit. We'll get into that in just a second. This hidden camera footage was taken a decade ago. Kyler Youth's ex-girlfriend, Caitlin Ferris, participating in a wiretap for the FBI to see if they could get any information about Kara Kopetsky's whereabouts. The day that I'm going to visit the death spot of my ex-girlfriend and I killed her. Used seemingly having no idea his words would be captured on audio as he and Ferris met up to make a Ouija board to attempt to speak with Kopetsky's spirit. Like, I really regret it. You know, I really didn't want to tell him in my entire life. We also heard testimony from another of Used's ex girlfriends, Candace St. Clair, who described their relationship as violent and unhealthy. She talked about an incident where she says Used attacked her 10 years ago in his apartment because she tried to leave him. He then proceeded to get on top of me to put his hands around my neck, hand over hand, to crush my trachea. She says he threatened to kill her. I have killed ex-girlfriends before out of sheer jealousy. I will kill you before you can let another scream out of your throat. The prosecution also called up Nick Yates, who was a friend and bandmate of use. When we had been drinking at a party at his house, we had gone up to Burger King and he had confessed to me that he'd killed Kara. Yates claims Yus told him he killed Kopetsky because she didn't love him and didn't want anyone to have her. Yus' defense tried to cast doubt and uncertainty on St. Clair's and Yates' testimony because St. Clair initially didn't tell the police about the attack. What's and Yates had been drinking the night Yus allegedly confessed, leaving him to wonder if he dreamed uh, it up. This So again, where we left off, we were right about to hear uh, the end of that FBI wiretap between Caitlin Ferris and Kyler Eust, where they were going to do that seance, and that's what we're going to hear tomorrow in tomorrow's testimony. We also heard testimony from a retired Belton police detective, Billy Jones. He kind of went over and outlined Eust and Kopetsky's phone records, all their texts and their calls on the day of May 4th, 2007. That's the day that Kopetsky went missing. They said uh, they show that they were in constant communication all morning long, and then after 10:25 a.m., there is no activity on Kopetsky's uh, phone, her social act, or social media, and her email. And so uh, that was some of the uh, initial testimony that we heard earlier this morning. Again, it'll pick up tomorrow morning at 8:30. I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News.